All right, um, here we are. I think this is day four now, working on the pattern. Uh, I got it all mounted, got all the holes plugged with the uh, tough caulk. You don't want to use Bondo, remember that. And you don't want to use, like, uh, oh, let me go and get Elmer's uh, wood putty. Don't use that because it's too soft. Body filler's too hard to, to, to work. And, Elmer, that stuff there, Elmer's putty is too soft. Don't use that either. I mean, in a bind you can use it, I guess. But anyway, let me show you the pattern here. Okay, now you see that? That's the runner here. And this is the gate system here on the bottom. Now, I had a little issue on this one. Normally, the gate system would be here all the way to the pattern. There's a gap here now. The reason why that gap is here, this is going to end right at... The rim, you remember the rim is bigger, so you don't want this to go over to the, over to here because then there'll be a, a, a lump there, so you don't want that, so uh, you might have to add a little bit of something in there, a little plastic in there, so I'm going to put a, a little fillet in there. Now talking about fillets, here's a leather. It's got like a little, it's hard to see, let me see if I can, you see it's like a, uh, it's like triangle shape, but when you put that in, when you put that in here and you take one of the, like you take a, a stylus ball, which is right here, there's one, this is a particular size, you can buy these at Freeman. You can make them, yeah, you can get a ball bearing and kneel and all that nonsense, but these are plated and they're smooth. So you spend the money and get the stuff, don't, don't, don't cheap it out. Now this is going to go on here and I'm going to, Put that all the way around. Now, that's a big fillet for there, but that's okay. It'll go all the way around there. And uh, that'll be for that. You have to glue this stuff on, and you have to cut it. Then I have a smaller one that I'm going to use. Uh, let me get that out. I know this is hard to find because you gotta, you got to find it somewhere, you know. you got to buy it. It's not cheap, but I'm doing it. So Now, this one here is going to be on this side. I'm going to put this around on the inside of the rim, which is going to make a, a fillet on the inside of the rim. And then I'll put one around here too, little one. And don't, you know, down around the out, actual outside, what I'm going to do there is take some wax. Now this is, this is fillet wax, special wax. Believe it or not, I've had this for 40 years. The same roll. It was started out here. Anyhow, this is fillet wax. This is 1 16th diameter. Why did, I guess they couldn't make the, the smaller stuff in a radius. And I'll take this stuff and put a little tiny, tiny fillet all the way around here so it doesn't have a sharp corner because this is what will happen. If there's a sharp corner and when they pull it out of the mold, what could happen is a little sand drop there. Okay, now a little sand drop there. Oh, okay, they blow the mold off, maybe, maybe not. And that sand will wash into the, and it goes right to the rim. Okay, so you try to avoid that as much as possible. So that's that. And that gets used, that gets melted. That gets melted with a alcohol lamp. We use the alcohol lamp with denatured alcohol. You light it off and you can't use a candle. You can't use a candle. A candle has black smoke and a black smoke will make all the mess on there. Do not use a, a, a candle. Okay, so I'm going to put fillets all around this, fillets all around that, fillets all around here, around there, and this and that. Now, when that's all completed, then we're going to paint it, paint it up real good, get it all sanded off, you know, make sure it's all clean. Paint it all real good with the lacquer, take your time, you got to have a little brush go in there, paint it all up, and then uh, when it's all done, just hit it with a little sandpaper. Now, don't forget, what are we going to use? To make the mold. Sand. And sand does what? It's abrasive. So when they put the sand in here, after a couple of molds, all this is going to get kind of sanded. And it again, if you will, breaks in. Okay? And then it just comes out. Now this mold here popped right out of the mold, out of my uh, repro mold. So that means that it's going to be a good drafted, good, good release piece. It's not going to dig, uh, grab on the spokes in here and make a mess. Because if it makes a mess in the spokes, then you got a filled in spoke. That looks like crap, and they try to grind it out, and they never grind it right. They grind it all messed up, and, and go in there with the diamond grinder and grind it all up. Now, interesting enough, 
the 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 uh, the Amish foundry, you know, they're they're uh, people that do not use electric. So interesting enough with them, when I first started going there about 20 years ago, they had no communication, and you need to have communication when you do a pattern, or do castings, because if something should happen, they could call you and say, hey, we're having a problem with this, you better come over. Uh, what would happen is they would just make the parts and say, hey, well, you know, I got no problem. Okay, well now, you had to used to give them, believe it or not, give them a postcard with your address on there, and then they would send you, hey, give us, come over and see us, we're having a problem. They would write it out and send it in the postcard. And then I would have to, I said, well, how much of the, you know, when the pattern is going to be ready? When the casing is going to be ready? Oh, well, come over in eight weeks. Yeah, I'm going to travel two hours and come over in eight weeks. Oh, they're not done. They'll be done next week. So I wasted a trip. So I gave them a, a postcard with my address and say, call me, you know, write me when they're done. So they would do that. And then they wouldn't tell me how much the parts were. I said, listen, tell me how much the parts are. Let me, let me, and I'll bring my check with me or whatever, and, you know. Okay, so I finally got them on track. Then, then later on, now they're allowed, and, you know, this breaking Amish stuff that you see on TV, now they're allowed to have a telephone. So they have a phone, and they'll call you. They'll call you for business. They can't, you can't call them and talk to them, but you can, they'll call you. You can leave a message, they'll call you back. They have a phone in their house, believe it or not. And the whole foundry runs off of hydraulic power, a diesel motor. They have all the, all the equipment, the drill press, everything runs off of, a, of a, uh, hydraulic or some, in some cases air, no, mostly hydraulic. And, but they do have electric. Now they're, they were allowed by their church to be able to have electric for welding because they're manufacturing things, but they're only allowed to use it for stuff that they sell. So they're coming around a little bit, you know? But anyway, we'll get this all uh, filled it up. I'll come back and show you how that goes along. I'll fill that up, and, and then we're going to paint it. And today will be done, five, four days, four days. Now, if I were to venture a guess at the actually how much time I spent on this in hours, I probably spent probably around 30 hours, 25 to 30 hours. So what's that worth? What's my time worth? You know, how much a dollars an hour, which I'm not counting, but um, I didn't work on it steady. So it took me four days to do it uh, off and on with doing everything else. Okay, we're going to do the fillets, and uh, we'll be back to show you how that goes. And now I'm about preparing to put the fillet on. And you have to use the stylus ball, like I said. And I took glue and put it all around the the, uh, the base. Now, I've got to find my knife. Here it is, my trusty knife. And you got to cut the thing off. You need a sharp knife to cut the leather. And you stay here. And I'm going to put the, I guess, the joint right there. And you kind of glue that down. And you put it around. And you push it into the into the part. Now you got to hold it with your finger. This is a lot harder to do than, than wax. Wax is much easier. And you got to make sure that you have it in there right. Otherwise it look funny. And believe it or not, that's almost like a feather edge on that stuff. And you come around and make sure it's longer. And you cut it. And believe it or not, when you're going around there, it stretches it out a little bit. And you got to keep your ball on the end here clean because it, it grabs on there. And you push it around. And you push it down. Push it down. Now over there, I'm going to have a problem. So I got to come with the smaller ball and kind of work it. I should have really done that a little differently but I gotta cut that a little bit better so it matches in now, I don't know if you can buy this stuff in small quantity but like I said it's not cheap now there's
Here's what I'm talking about. You can see the gate there. Uh, right there where I kept it away so it just sits on the rim. And uh, now here's one without. Okay, I'm going to do that one next. All right, we're back again. Uh, got the leather all done. Let me show you that. I'm going to watch it. I don't burn myself up here with that. I got the leather all done. Here's the, the back now. You can see it there. Now I'm going to do wax. I got leather all the way around. Nice leather fillet this side. Nice leather fillet. Looks really good. And uh, by the way, there's holes that got to go on the end here for the pins, for the flask. I've been asking the foundry to give me the dimensions on that so I can put the holes in. But, you know, they want to do it. They say some kind of nonsense where we can fit it better, but they charge me $15 for it, which is really cheap, actually. But uh, So we don't put the holes in them. Let them do it. But anyhow, got two different size fillets on there. Now we're going to use wax. That is an alcohol lamp. You probably can't see the flame. I don't know. But um, we've got the wax. Where is that at? Okay, this is the wax. It's round. And the other wax I have, the next size is two, I got, well, three different sizes there up to eight, three thirty-second, one eighth, one sixteenth. Uh, the difference is this one's rounded and those are radius shaped like the pill is supposed to be. What I have to do with this one is, first of all, I got to put it, mash it down with the round ball to get it flat and then go around with the smaller end. This is the small end. You can see it better if I do that. And uh, but big end. Okay, so just heat this up. But so what I have to do is take the round ball, the big ball, and kind of push it down first. Then go back with the smaller one, and you work it. Now I'm going to tell you that somebody's going to say, "Hey, Dave." You know, you can get an electric wax thing to do that. No, you can't. And the reason why you can't is because the wax, electric one, stays hot all the time. And this one actually is starting to cool off. And I, as I, as it boils cooling down, you can kind of whack, uh, burnish it in and smooth it out. See, as it stays hot. Now, we're going around. You just hold it there for a second. Do the same thing here. Get to where the other one starts. You hold it, pull it off. That's it. Okay, now that's a wax fill all around there on the rim. I'm going to take it and cut it down a little bit smaller. And like I said before, if you have a sharp corner, if you need a sharp corner, that's one thing. But if you have a sharp 90, dead sharp 90 degree corner, What's going to happen is the sand is going to grab there a little bit, and a little bit of flakes falling down, and it's laying there, and then metal comes in, and that all floats around on the top and makes holes in the pat in the casting. So you want to try to keep the the sharp radiuses to a minimum. And just keep working it, smooth it. Now the one other thing I do. I can find it real quick here. I have actually just a piece of one of my springs that we were doing earlier, a couple videos back. This is one of the springs I've had it for years, and it's got I ground different size radiuses on it. And what you do with that, this is the smallest one. You take it and you lay it flat like this, and you scrape that. Hey, you scrape that nice and smooth. You can go this way too. You get that nice and sharp there. You just get all the excess off. Makes a real nice job out of it. Okay, now I saw one spot that came off a little bit because it wasn't completely done. Can't piece came out, wasn't completely tight. Heat it up, run it, burnish it in. 
take the wax, the scraper. They sell these things too, but I made one. No biggie. And that's a wax fillet on this side. All right, I got the other fillets all done. Now I'm doing the wax. I'm putting wax around here. Now I'm putting more of a generous eighth inch radius around this. And uh, that could be wax. And the reason being is, in case you got to change it or something, it's not the basic pattern, not the main part of the pattern. What I find out is that when I go to the foundry, and I said this in an earlier video on this series, that no matter what foundry you go to, who the heck made that pattern? I've seen it a hundred times. It's just that they're never satisfied with the pattern the way it is. So, not the pattern itself, but the, the gating. They, they always got their own ideas about the gating. So, I do what I can. I do the best I can to save myself some money. But generally speaking, they on occasion, they do change it. I'm going to scrape this. Scrape it up. And even, even the fact that I'm scraping it, when I paint it, I'll notice more. I'm going to do is uh, put a vertical here like this. Vertical and then a little bit going the other way. Get back into the pattern. Okay, we're coming down the home stretch. I'm going to paint up and, you know, just paint it like anything else. But you, got, you can't be globby with the paint, for one thing. You can't just glob it on and go like this and let it run down the sides because in reality it makes like a, a little bit of an edge there and it causes the sand to grab and then again you got a bad casting. All right, now the other thing I want to mention is, see this stuff right here? This is Freeman, and by the way, the tough carb comes from Freeman also. Freeman Supply. They're in Ohio someplace. Look them up on the internet. This is... Freeman 90-1 pattern coating, gray. Now, gray, why gray? Look, everybody uses gray. Don't ask me why. There's, you see over there in the corner, that's a coupler pattern over there. Those guys, they want to paint them red. I don't know. It, the metal doesn't know any difference. How does the metal know what, what color the, the pattern is? But they paint them red. They say it works better. I doubt it, but whatever they want to do. I paint them gray because that's what I always did. And most of the foundries, the standard is gray. And the standard for the, uh, for the um, core prints, we'll get into another time, is black. Now, one time there's a standard somewhere, the National Foundry Supply or whatever, Institute of Foundry Workers, or whatever the name of the place is, they tell you, well, okay, the, the pattern should be this color and the, the core print should be that color. And they make all the colors. They make orange, they make red, black, gray, yellow. And for every reason, that's the colors that you're supposed to paint the patterns. But, like I said, metal don't know the difference. Now you say, well, why use this? This stuff here, what's, what's wrong with the, I go down to Home Depot and buy the bare paint, the best paint in the world, right? If you ever use it, you know what it's about. And uh, to me, it's not the best paint in the world, but uh, you use this stuff here, which is lacquer. Now you say, well, I can go get lacquer. I can go get it anywhere. No, you can't. Because this is specially formulated, so it doesn't attack the wax, for one thing. And the other thing is it gets really, really hard, and the sand won't stick to it. Now, I know somebody who painted one of these with house paint. That's like the worst thing you can do. The house paint is soft, and the sand will stick to it. I don't care how much powdering you put on it, you know? It's going to stick. So that's not a good thing to do. And, uh, one thing I wanted to mention is everybody, all the people who... Um, comment on these this series of video, videos, uh, I really appreciate that. And uh, one of the people I do appreciate is Mr. Pete Tubacane there. Uh, I never met him. He likes my videos, and I got I think very highly of him. And I don't know if Keith Renner watches my videos, but uh, he's another pretty cool dude. I'd like to meet him one of these days. 
I get up that area, I'm going to go see them. Uh, kind of, we're kind of like all in the same boat here. And uh, you paint, like you know, paint like anything else, you paint it. And you get the first coat on, and then you, you wait for it to set up. The, the, the nice part about this is it dries real quick. That's it from here. This video is done. Five parts. Haven't done one of them in a long time. And I hope you enjoy my new quality camera and everything. I'm having a ball with it. In fact, I want to get another camera. Okay, we'll see you again on the next video. Thanks for watching.